Welcome back everyone. We are now on the last video for this section on compound inequalities and I hope you're starting to feel a little more confident in the, these concepts of intervals that are true. In this last video, I'm going to talk about how to progress and use your outline for the remainder of the pages. You probably noticed this is a pretty long outline and that is true because I have some answer keys in the back. You probably noticed that. Also, there are these theory questions just to check your memory that also have solutions at the end. So go through these, make sure you try them before you look at the solutions <laughs> um, because you need to be able to talk about why they would or would not work well. And then for the next part, are these, these are these challenge questions where you're asked information about a graph given and can you figure out where the endpoints are. Um, this is important because it's asking you to take another step forward with domain and range. Notice that the value inside the inequality is y. This means that the y value is the vertical axis, not the horizontal axis. So this graph is true on the interval from y equals negative 4 to 2, and um, the endpoints are different. Now, where is that? The question, the question is tricky because the value for y is the vertical value between negative 4, so 1, 2, 3, 4, negative 4, and 2. I just gave the y-axis value. I did not actually do the calculation for y itself because notice y is defined as 2x minus 4. And the y values are along the vertical axis. Now it gave us the values, but it didn't talk about where on the graph that is. So you have to be able to recognize where on the graph you would highlight, which I just did for you. You're welcome. <laughs> but I also want you to figure out what the end points would be. Would this, this point here at um, 0, negative 4 be an open dot or closed dot? And would this value up here at 3, 2 be an open dot or a closed dot? So you need to figure out what that notation would be on those two end points. We also need to graph below the highlighted interval where x is less than negative 1 or x is greater than or equal to 2. So that being said, we're going to highlight those intervals on the x-axis, the horizontal axis. We're going to do that first before we worry about the, the line. So x is greater than or equal to 2 and x is less than negative 1. And I'm going to use open dots, closed dots for this um, when I graph it on the actual line. But for now, I'm going to use, so there's a parenthesis at negative 1, and there is a bracket opening to the right at 2. Now, what you need to do from here is make a vertical dotted line, because the dotted line means you're not including the endpoint. And at 2, x equals 2, draw a solid line vertically. And look at where it intersects your actual equation of a line. On the far left at negative 1, your coordinate point where it intersects your graph is at negative 1, 4. Since this is a dotted line, you do not include the endpoint. So it would be an open dot there. And at the point 2, negative 2, you also have an intersection, which is a bracket so or a solid line, which means you have a closed dot. So the interval that is true for this graph is from 2 to infinity. So I'm highlighting that part of the graph. And from negative infinity to negative 1. So I'm highlighting that part of the graph. Notice this is a union, so we had this gap in between. Now this is two-dimensional. This is something that I absolutely love doing, but it is a little tricky. It's a little bit of a mind bender at first. Um, 
Go through and try this again with the other question. Maybe do ands and ors. There's plenty of paper on this handout where you can try a different graph and see if you get it. Make sure you talk to your instructor. If you don't understand this, this is very important. Please make sure you understand where the idea of domain and range come in. And there are all your answers. So hopefully you take some time to go through and look at the answers once you're done. This idea of when the interval is true and when it is not. And then you're done.